Every x86 handheld owner faces the same dilemma. You get this incredible piece of tech like the ROG Ally X, and it comes with its own software, Armory Crate in this case. And don't get me wrong, Armory Crate is the best of the bunch. Legion Space feels a bit unfinished, and MSI Center M, well, let's just say it's getting better. But using official software always feels like compromise. You get convenience, but are you leaving performance on the table? Are you sacrificing precious battery life for a flashy interface? It's a question that's been bugging me, so naturally I went looking for an answer. What I didn't realize is that my search would lead to a small, community-built tool that would completely change how I use my ROG Ally X. It's called G Helper, and it's not just improving my performance, it's giving me hours of battery life that I didn't think were possible. So let's find out how. This whole investigation started where all great, slightly nerdy investigations do on GitHub. Well, G Helper has a website, I found that the GitHub page is usually the most up-to-date source. On the side, you'll spot the latest release. Go ahead and grab the exe, we don't need the whole zip file. Let's click on that to download it. Now I'm a bit of a neat freak with my downloads folder, so the first thing I did was cut that file out and give it a more permanent home. For me, that's a dedicated G Helper folder inside my documents. Before we unleash its power, we have to do a bit of prep work first. First, right click on the exe file. You can do this by holding your finger down on the exe. Then select properties. You'll see a little unblock checkbox at the bottom. Ticking this is basically a way of telling Windows, hey, I trust this program, let it do its thing. After which, then pop over to the compatibility tab and check run as administrator. This is crucial for letting the software control your ally's hardware. With all that done, right click on it one more time and click show more options. Then just click send to desktop create shortcut. If you get a message showing this, just click more info and run anyway. The first thing you notice about G Helper is, well, what isn't there? There are no flashy animations, there are no weird textured menus. It's a clean, simple window with everything you need. It's quite simply an elegant design. At the top, you have three different power profile modes, silent, balanced, and turbo. This is mission control. To the right, you'll find the fans and power button. This is where the real magic happens. Below that, you've got your GPU settings for things like an FPS limiter and a performance overlay. But the most intriguing button here is Auto TDP. Auto TDP sounds like it's almost too good to be true, and trust me, we'll be coming back to that later. The rest is pretty straightforward. You can select your screen's refresh rate. I highly recommend sticking to 120Hz to keep that VRR working. You can even tweak your display's color profile. I personally switch mine to Vivid because the extra pop of color makes the IPS screen feel more alive, but if you're a purist, the stock setting is perfectly accurate. There is something else that I would do though. Click on this little extra tab down at the bottom. After turning off the ridiculously loud boot sound, you're welcome everyone at my local coffee shop. It was time to get to work. I would also disable AMD Display Very Bright. This allows AMD to auto adjust the brightness. It can be a little distracting in games. So I would uncheck these two options. This is where we turn G Helper from a cool app into an essential tool. We're gonna go ahead and customize each power profile for on the go gaming. A quick note on the terms, SPL is your marathon pace, the sustained power that the CPU can draw. SPPT and FPPT are the short sprints, brief boosts in power for when the system needs it. For each single one of these profiles, you're going to have to adjust all these settings. I would also recommend disabling the CPU turbo. On this chip, it's basically a feature that just eats your battery life with almost no performance gain. Go ahead and click on the silent mode, then click the fans and power option. That's going to bring up this menu on the side here. 
Silent mode is for watching YouTube or playing a simple indie game. I set the marathon pace, the SPL, to 8 watts. Anything else just felt a little sluggish. The sprint power I set to 12 watts. Make sure to also check off apply power limits at the bottom to apply the changes. For the silent mode, make sure to select the Windows power option for best power efficiency just up at the top. Regarding balance mode, this is for everyday gaming. I found the sweet spot was around 17 watts for your marathon pace with a 21 watt sprint. Make sure to keep the CPU boost disabled on all of these modes. For the Windows Power mode, make sure to select that to Balanced. Now for Turbo mode. This is when you need a game to run that is just way too demanding for a handheld device. But you want to do it anyway. I pushed the SPL to 25 watts and the sprints both to 30. I also selected the Windows Power mode to Best Performance. Now that we've tuned our ROG Ally, what about that magic button? What about Auto TDP? The promise of Auto TDP is that you set your target frame rate and G Helper will dynamically adjust the power to hit that target and not use a single watt more. It honestly sounds too good to be true, so I had to put it to the test. To enable the Auto TDP option, Go ahead and select that auto TDP. It'll go red to show that that's been selected. Let me show you three different scenarios where this is going to be really helpful. I'm going to start off with silent mode and auto TDP. Starting things off with the chill indie, coffee talk. This is the perfect scenario for silent mode. I engaged auto TDP and set the FPS limit to 45 watts. The result was incredible. The APU is only pulling 5 watts. The entire system is just sipping power, pulling only around 9 watts. For Hades 2, time to step it up to our balance profile, with the settings on high at 1080p. I turned on the auto TDP and set my preferred FPS limit to 75. The game is dancing around that 75 FPS pretty consistently. The APU is pulling 10 watts and it's only running at 42 degrees Celsius. However, the entire system is only pulling about 15 to 16 watts. Still fantastic results, and it's only pulling what it needs. The AAA Monster, Oblivion Remastered. This is the ultimate test. Honestly, it's a miracle that this game runs on a handheld at all. I switched it to Turbo Mode with the Auto TDP engaged with an FPS limit of 40 in the middle of a huge open world area with a mix of low to medium and some high settings. It held that 40 FPS line, no frame gen. On a game that had no business running this well on a handheld, I was looking at 2-2.5 two to two and a half hours of battery. That's simply incredible. The APU is pulling 24 watts, with the total unit pulling around 37-38 to 38 watts. Still pretty fantastic. So have I decided to use G Helper over Armory Crate? Absolutely. The final step for me is to tell Armory Crate to take a back seat. In the G Helper Extra tab, you can find a button at the bottom that stops all the Asus services. This lets G Helper take full control. Just a bonus feature as well that I thought was pretty neat. Up at the top, you can assign each one of these buttons to something else. I have the command center set to toggle the controller mode, and I have the ROG Ally button set to pop open with the G Helper interface. I've tested a lot of software on handhelds, but this one is just different. The level of control, the performance gains, and especially the impact on battery life. I recently used G Helper on a Zephyrus G14 laptop that I picked up. This was effectively my first laptop in about 15 to 20 years, and it was getting less than two hours of battery life for basic productivity. After tinkering and using G Helper, it's now hitting eight hours for light gaming and productivity, like with writing this very script. If you have an ROG Ally or supported device, I would highly recommend checking it out. I think you owe it to yourself to try this. It's that good. Anyways, that's all I've got. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. 
Thanks for watching.